Hey, how's it going everyone? I'm Colby Cheese, and today I'm going to be telling you why you should be using Vim. This is an amazing editor that I recommend to everyone, even if you're not a programmer, if you just wrote articles for a living, I would say you should probably use Vim. Now there's a lot of myths that I probably need to dispel about Vim, so just to be real quick, I mean, uh, the main thing I hear about it is like, oh, you can you're going to be extremely unproductive while you're trying to learn Vim, and it's going to take you weeks to get good at it. And on top of that, it can't even emulate a lot of the features that I'm already using in my editors. These are the things that I hear about it, and really that's just not true. In fact, it took me probably like two days of playing around with Vim to feel like I was good enough to actually not be extremely unproductive. And there is definitely a large learning curve if you want to just master all of the plugins and all of the crazy stuff that you can do in Vim, but it's like chess. You can learn to play chess in a day, but if you want to be an amazing master, that's going to take longer. You don't need to be an amazing master to use Vim. You just need to learn some of the basic movement commands. So why use Vim? Well, first of all, it allows for really fast and fun editing and mouse-free productivity. Whenever I go jump into an editor online, I hate grabbing my mouse and clicking on where I want to uh, put my text and then typing it in there and then using the arrow keys and things like that. So that's just super annoying to me and it's, it's, a, it's a bother. So that's why I like to use Vim. Uh, it does have an amazing amount of plugin support and customizability and you'll feel like a super hacker while using it. So why am I talking about this? Well, I love using Vim and it's, it's a big part of what I do. So on my blog and website here, I actually wrote an article uh, called Level Up Your Workflow with Vim and Tmux. And I thought it was a great starting point, but a lot of people just don't know uh, some of the cool features of Vim. So that's what I want to show you here. And when you first start using Vim, there are some odd things that you're not going to be used to if you're using pretty much any other editor out there. So uh, let me go ahead and show you some of the most useful parts of Vim real quick and give you a nice breakdown of how that all works out. So. Uh, if we just kind of jump in here and open up a file, I've got, uh, let's see, one to show you here. So this is just a little file in Vim that I, just a random snippet from some code that I was working on uh, for a voting app. And just to move around it and really any other editor, let's say I wanted to edit something over here, I'd have to take my mouse and uh, maybe click right here and then start typing. Um, or, or I'd have to use arrow keys you know, one at a time and, and get to where I needed to go. And, and, that, and that's not really too efficient. In Vim, the cool thing about it is that you can jump around. Uh, there's all kinds of different commands and it would take me a while to explain everything, but I'm just gonna show you some of the main ones. So if I wanna jump to the end of the word and start editing, I can do that. Or I can uh, go down uh, a couple of lines real easily. I can jump backwards and start editing at the beginning of the line. Um, I can actually edit at the very beginning of the, of the entire line or at the very end. Uh, let's say I'd like an apostrophe to put there, you know, I could just push uh, a button there and jump to the end and start typing that in. If I wanted to delete some lines, that's real simple, and then I can go put them somewhere else, and then I can, uh, you know, I can rearrange the code however I like. So there's a lot of really cool stuff that you can do to move around fast, but this is probably the one thing, if this was a 30 second video and I had to show you one feature, this is the main thing that makes Vim awesome. So I can actually edit everything within enclosures quickly. So um, let's edit everything within that quotation mark and change it to this. And then we'll jump up, uh, you know, maybe down here and we'll change everything inside the brackets to something else. And uh, maybe we just want to delete everything inside the uh, parentheses. So as you can see, there's so much really simple stuff you can do with Vim. Uh, let's say I want to jump to the top of the file, I can do that. I want to go to undefined, that's real fast. We'll delete that and um, you know we can do all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, let's say I want to find this meteor and uh, we, want to, we want to delete to the end and then I want to do the same thing on this line. I'm going to hit the dot and that just repeats the command. So there you go. I just gave you a, a, a quick a vomit of cool features that I use pretty often when editing files in Vim and on my projects. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that is really useful that I'm not going to get into in order to keep this video short, uh, but that alone is probably enough that you should probably want to use Vim. Now, I don't recommend everyone just run out there and start using um, straight up pure Vim right away and downloading some big Vim config file because you'll get confused and annoyed quickly. 
So what I recommend is that what you do is, and this is how I learned them, and let me show you some of the stuff that I did. So basically, uh, I started off, uh, to learn Vim, I started off using uh, Vim Adventures. And this is a great little browser game that you can jump into. It's got a paid version, but you don't have to. I actually just played through the free levels. And, and the idea is that when you first start using Vim, it, it, it does have a lot of stuff that you're not going to be used to. And the main thing you want to learn is just the movement commands like H, K, J, L. Uh, the idea is that you're always on the home row so that you're not moving your hands around all over the place. And this is just going to teach you uh, to get used to moving around like that. Eventually, it'll teach you the, the jumping to different words and, and things like that. Uh, so play through at least the free levels on this. Uh, I also recommend go into your command line and just type in Vim Tutor. And that will open up the uh, Vim Tutor. Just if you have Vim installed, this is going to show you pretty much all the stuff you need to know. You just kind of scroll through the document, read the stuff, and it helps you out like pretty tremendously. This, this is going to take you maybe like 30 minutes to an hour, depending on how much you really want to absorb. Um, once you've got that stuff down, install a Vim mode in your editor. I used Sublime Text 2 for a really long time. Uh, Sublime Text 3, I think. And there's a vintage mode within there. You can also use a Vim mode within uh, WebStorm if you use that. Um, there's uh, different Vim modes that you can use in various editors, and I recommend trying those out for sure. So um, that way you can just get used to the movement commands, and that's really all you need to do. And and have like a cheat sheet open. So so I recommend having a little cheat sheet open. Uh, this is I just googled Vim cheat sheet. This is the first uh, thing that popped up. You can use whatever you want, but this one is actually really useful. It's got some of the uh, commands that you're going to be using, like replacing characters, moving around, uh, yanking files, which is a copy. Uh, you can delete whole lines. Yeah, this is this is really simple. There's a lot of stuff in here. You can't memorize all this right away, and you don't have to. Don't worry about it. Just have it up and just try and use like a, a different command. Uh, just like try and master one command at a time. That's all. That's all. Honestly, all you got to do. And if you're within an editor you're already comfortable with, it's not going to be terrible for you. Like I said, it took me maybe two or three days of just kind of playing around with it and just learning one command at a time and doing those little tutorials, and I figured it out. So, uh, all right, guys, that's pretty much it. I'm not going to go. I, I have so much more that I can show you, and I probably will, but not in this video. If you want to learn more about them, and if you want to uh, get better at it, then I'll make some more tutorials and the future some screencasts that will help you out with that and maybe some blog posts so check me out at kibblecheese.com or you can subscribe here and i will be uh speaking with you guys next time peace out bro